Okay, hi there. Welcome to another video on fiscal policy. We're going to spend a few minutes thinking about the economics of an expansionary fiscal policy. Well, first of all, what do we mean by this term? It's uh, a policy that involves the government aiming to deliberately increase or stimulate aggregate demand. They can do that in a variety of ways. One would be to inject some extra government spending into the economy in real terms on health, on education, on housing, on transport, for example. Or they could also decide to lower the burden of taxation by cutting direct and or indirect taxes. So it's a deliberate fiscal stimulus, an expansionary fiscal policy, which is normally financed by an increase in the size of the, the fiscal or the budget deficit, which of course is the gap between government spending and taxation. Uh, I mean, you'll study countries, of course, of particular interest. I was just trying to find two or three examples of good recent examples of expansion of fiscal policy. The IMF published a report just a few weeks back saying that the growth in the United States in during 2021 had been supported by what they called aggressive fiscal stimulus, including some, some direct uh, COVID checks paid into the, the bank accounts of millions of households, which gave them extra spending power. And I was really interested to read this article in the Financial Times uh, recently. Japan unveils a uh, $380 billion stimulus package to boost lagging recovery. Huge fiscal stimulus, generous cash handouts for households, support for businesses and things. Um, cash handouts for households for children under the age of 18. They've already spent 88 trillion yen in fiscal stimulus or nearly 17% of GDP since the start of the COVID pandemic. So the latest fiscal stimulus, expansionary fiscal policy, is worth 8% of Japanese GDP, a huge policy. So as I say, the main aim of an expansionary fiscal policy is usually to, to stimulate real output, GDP, uh, to drive employment creation, and perhaps, and this is quite important, uh, reduce the risk or the threat of a persistent deflationary recession. Now, the impact, of course, of a stimulus takes time to feed through the circular flow of income and spending. The time lags will be variable. Contrast, for example, Japanese cash handouts with uh, those long-term infrastructure projects. So how do we analyse how an expansionary fiscal policy might impact on demand, growth, jobs and prices? Well, let's take a, a quick chain of reasoning as an example. So an expansion of fiscal policy aims to stimulate demand, output and jobs. For example, good application, a reduction in the standard rate of income tax in the UK. Let's say the government cut income tax from 20% to 18%. That tax cut increases household disposable income, which in theory then leads to a rise in consumer spending, which prompts an outward shift of aggregate demand, which leads to an expansion of short-run aggregate supply. You move up the aggregate supply curve. As a result, it's a nice connective phrase, there'll be a higher equilibrium level of real GDP, which might then help to close a negative output gap and could also help to reduce the risk, to lower the, the risk of price deflation, particularly if a country uh, it has a rate of inflation close to zero. Don't forget, when you're explaining, when you're doing the analysis, build analytical chains of reasoning to get those top marks. And, of course, you can also use ADAS analysis to help you. So here's an expansion of fiscal policy, an increase in government spending, for example, or cut in tax. And the impact of that can be strong when the economy has lots and plenty of spare capacity. In other words, where actual GDP, Y1 initially, is well below the potential level of national output. And there's plenty of scope for, for demand and output and jobs to rise without causing inflation. And if inflation stays low, then central bank interest rates can also possibly stay low as well. So there's our increase in government spending. Develop the diagram a little bit because the injection of money into the economy via a fiscal stimulus can also cause a positive multiplier effect. A lot of students now doing this in their exams, very cleverly, and I think to good effect, they're developing their diagrams to bring in the idea of the multiplier effect. People in construction, for example, with you know, a government construction project, a building project, for example, they get, they get jobs, they get higher incomes, they'll spend their money in retail and things, and that creates jobs elsewhere in the economy. 
So there might also be a physical multiplier effect shown by the shift from AD2 to AD3. I mean, in theory, the multiplier effect is therefore Y1 to Y3 divided by Y1 to Y2. Now, as evaluation, what factors can influence the impact of this policy? What uh, factors influence whether an expansionary fiscal policy does achieve its desired or stated objectives? I'm going to pick out five points. I'm sure there are many more you can cover, and I'll link to some other key topics. So the macroeconomic impact impacts of an expansion of fiscal policy depends in part. I like that phrase, by the way, depends in part. There's a, there's a hint of uncertainty and the fact that there are many factors at play. First of all, whether uh, it leads to higher market interest rates. You see, if the government's borrowing more money by spending more and taxing less, uh, that might cause the yield on government debt to go up and market interest rates might also rise. Uh, and, and I would recommend that you look at our video on crowding out as a concept. Crowding out can reduce the effect of an expansionary fiscal policy. A second evaluation point, uh, the impact depends on whether expansionary fiscal policies can lead to uh, an acceleration in inflation. And if prices start rising more quickly, uh, that's going to cut people's real incomes and spending. And again, that can negate the stimulus effect. The impact depends on the marginal propensity to spend and save of households. If you're giving people a tax cut, will they choose to spend or save it? Or will they uh, choose to, uh, uh, to save the money to help repay existing debt? Uh, if they choose to save it, of course, the impact of the fiscal multiplier is lower. The impact depends on the marginal propensity to import. Again, if the government's cutting taxes, uh, disposable income's going up, but are people spending that money, are they spending it on domestically produced goods and services? Or will that uh, cause a, a rise in imports and an increasing net trade deficit, which of course has negative effects for aggregate demand? And generally, whether the expansionary policy, we talked about uh, that big stimulus policy in Japan, for example, whether that leads to an improvement in both consumer and, in particular, business confidence. Will businesses feel that the economy is moving forward again and they can fast forward their own investment and employment plans? I think the key point, really, is that the impact of an expansion of fiscal policy depends on what else is happening in the economy, what's happening to interest rates, what's happening to house prices. Uh, it also depends on the timing of the fiscal stimulus. Is it different if you, if, you, if you target it coming out of recession compared to a couple, of, a couple of years later? It also depends, of course, on the size of the injection of demand under the circular flow measured as a share of GDP. So Japan's fiscal stimulus, the latest round, 8% of GDP. Now, that is significant, but will it work? Of course, everything is up in the air. It's a, there's a lot of doubt there. Now, you could, of course, use the Keynesian long run aggregate supply curve to show the effect of fiscal policy. Uh, when uh, aggregate supply is elastic, an increase in government spending uh, will cause an increase in GDP without there being any significant risk of inflation. But if the aggregate supply curve is becoming more inelastic, for example, if we move from AD3 to AD4, then here uh, an outward shift of demand uh, caused by fiscal stimulus can lead to higher inflation can see on the x and y axis there and that might then prompt the central bank to start raising policy interest rates to control inflation again using adas analysis to help your answer is a terrific way of getting excellent analysis marks but make sure your diagrams are aced axes curves equilibria and if you can develop the diagram a little bit more don't just draw a basic diagram draw a full one to make your point i think this is a great topic uh, to bring in different schools of economic thought. Keynesian economists favour the use of fiscal stimulus when the economy is stuck in a liquidity trap, when, when monetary policy is no longer really working. Crowding out theorists argue that higher government spending and borrowing can raise interest rates and they can squeeze out productive private sector investment. And there's also a theory called modern monetary theory, which argues that uh, government borrowing can can be easily financed by printing money without providing inflation remains relatively stable. There's loads of different economic perspectives on this kind of topic, 
and it's well worth having a, a view on one or two of these things to go with your examples to help build great evaluation. Okay, thanks for joining in. Stay safe, stay curious. See you next time.